Hello and welcome to Influence Church Online. We are so glad that you are here today, wherever it is that you are watching from, around the globe or around our different locations of church, Richmond, Barnard Castle, Penrith, Bishop Auckland, and even Workington. We are so glad that you could join us for church today. Today is a special online service because it's Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. Today is a day that we celebrate that not only was Jesus willing to lay down his life for us, but that he rose again, that he conquered death, that he conquered the grave to be able to provide a way for us to experience life in all its fullness. And we believe that through the power of the Holy Spirit, the same power that rose Christ from the dead, the same power that conquered the grave lives in us, that we are overcomers, we are more than conquerors through Christ. And that's what we're celebrating today on Easter Sunday. And so we hope this service is a source of strength and hope and inspiration and empowerment to you today. What a significant day it is for us as believers, the day that we celebrate all that Christ did for us. Obviously, we celebrate that all through the year. Every time we pray, every time we worship, but there's something special about us worshiping together on Easter Sunday. So although uh, you are here for an online service, let's really engage with our worship this morning. Let's really declare the truth and the power of who God is in our lives. Let's thank him for his resurrection power that he made possible for us. And as it's Easter Sunday, we hope we enter into a new level in our worship today. God, we thank you for the opportunity to gather. We thank you today that you made a way for us that you rose again on Easter Sunday. And God, we choose to honor you now with our worship. Would you be glorified through this service today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. When I first heard the story, I was kind of shocked because I thought, he's dead now. Oh, that's sad. I, I think I felt happy the first time I uh, heard the story. Happy that he is alive. The most people think that there's an Easter bunny and like all these plastic eggs filled with chocolate and you get eggs, you have an Easter bunny come in. Chocolate is one of the best foods in the world. Not to me. We hide, we hide Easter eggs and <laughs> look for them. <laughs> Do you love Easter eggs? Yes. <laughs> What's your favourite part of Easter? The eating. <laughs> yeah. Easter is when Jesus dies on a cross. He came down to earth to save us all. Uh, celebrating um, that um, he rose from the dead. But Jesus died on a cross for everyone. For all of our sins. Sin is the things that we do wrong. Being mean. Disobeying God. Um, hitting each other. Uh, basically going down stairs and taking your mum's chocolate and eating it and then saying, uh, my brother did it. it. Wasn't me. Did you actually do that? No. So what happened to Jesus before he died? The story begins at the Last Supper with Jesus and his friends. He told uh, them that one day um, one of them would betray him. <laughs> Naughty. <laughs> he said to his disciples the three days that he will rise again. He took some few friends and went to the garden and he started praying to God. Some of them fell asleep, uh, but Jesus didn't. Here came Judas with uh, a, an army of men. Yeah, and uh, they killed Jesus and, and uh, arrested. basically arrested him. And he told them, whoever I kiss is your man. They took him away to a trial. And he was taken before Pontius Pilate, 
who wanted to save him. The people said to crucify him. They got him a, a king's hat, what um, got some needles in, what really hurt him. His friends felt sad. They sad. felt annoyed and angry that the people were making him do this and he wasn't even putting up a fight. Uh, that there was not very much fairness in it, like, because he did nothing wrong. So basically, it's just unfair, unjust people would say. And when Jesus was nailed to the cross, he, the sun went black for three days. While Jesus was on the cross, he prayed to his father to save all his people. He would talk to two of the um, uh, people next to him, one, uh, and one of them um, was nice, um, um, and he said he wanted to go to heaven. They put a big boulder um, around the entrance so no one can see him, no one can get him out. Three days later, he rose again. Some of his friends came over to the tomb and there to bring some uh, stuff for the body or whatever. The um, stone was rolled back. His body was gone and the tomb was empty. He was alive and everyone was like, Yay! Yay! Um, and then Jesus went to his disciples um, and he showed them his hands and it was like holes in his hands. He appeared in a room with all the windows blocked. Before he rose back to heaven, he gave them all the Holy Spirit so that they could tell everybody the good news about him. How does it make you feel knowing that Jesus died for you? I'm happy because I know that um, everyone who um, uh, didn't believe in Jesus, who can believe in Jesus and give their God life to Jesus, can go to heaven. I think that's it. Yep, we're done. Bye! Bye! Bye. Bye.
you that there is power in our praise that when we whenever we choose to make praise a priority in our life then something starts to change something starts to shift when we lift our eyes above our circumstances praise and worship always does that it doesn't just give us an opportunity to sing a song or to watch some people singing a song on an online service but what worship does in its truest form is worship lifted, lifts our eyes above our circumstances and it fixes our eyes on God the author and the perfecter of our faith the one who made a way where there seems to be no way the 
the one who was celebrating today conquered the grave. Worship lifts our eyes above, it fixes them on him, that God is worthy of our praise. But there is power in our praise. We see that right throughout scripture. In the Old Testament, we read about Joshua and the Israelites at the walls of Jericho, that when they started to praise and they blew those trumpets and they shouted, the walls came down. In the New Testament, in Acts 16, we read about Paul and Silas who learned to praise, who chose to make a priority of praise, even though they were in a prison cell and God brought about a breakthrough for their life. There's something powerful. There's a breakthrough power on our praise. I want to read you this scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4. It says, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of this world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. There is divine power in our praise today. So I encourage you that I know we've just had our time of praise and worship for an online service, but actually there is power in your praise, not just when you are uh, watching a service, not just when you gather in the walls of the church, but you can unlock that power of praise, not just on an Easter Sunday service, but any time we choose to praise God, when we choose to put him first, exalt him above our feelings and our circumstances, God is going to unlock some power and some breakthrough in your life. God, we thank you today that you are a faithful God, that you are a powerful God. We choose God today to worship you. We pray that our praise and our worship would be honoring to you, that it would be a sweet smell and sacrifice, that today on this Easter Sunday day, God, we choose to lift you up, to thank you for your faithfulness, to thank you for your goodness towards us, that you loved us enough that you sent your son for us. God, help us to live our lives in response to that, that we might always choose to worship you and unlock the power of praise in our lives. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Welcome to church. It is Easter Sunday and I am so excited to reflect today on what Easter means for us as Christians. But first, this is Church News. Hey. We are so glad that you are here with us today for Easter Sunday, whether you're in church or you're watching online, we're so glad that you are here. I wanted to take a moment to let you know that our Sunday services are happening every single week, both in church and online, and we would love to see you again. Our physical services are happening. We have five services in four locations, Richmond, Barnard Castle, Penrith, and Bishop Auckland every single Sunday. You can reserve a seat online and come and join us for church. And also our online services happen on Facebook, on YouTube, and on our website every single Sunday. We would love to see you there. Coming up on the 15th of April is our next I Believe course. I Believe runs for people who are new to church, new to faith, or just want to explore the basics of Christianity. You can sign up for this by heading over to our website, www.influencechurch.co.uk forward slash events to find out more details. Hero Factory is the children's department here at Influence Church and we have tons of things happening every week for you and your children. Every single Sunday at half a over on our Hero Factory YouTube we have Kids Church. So even if you're joining us for a physical service or watching online, your children can still enjoy Kids Church. Also, throughout the week, we have tons of things happening over on our Facebook and Instagram pages. Lots of discussions so that you can carry on the conversation at home, activities and tons more. So make sure your children check out Kids Church this week. Every single week we have an opportunity to give financially into the life of church and all that God is doing through us as a church. It is such a privilege to be able to play a part in all that is happening here. Um, there are many ways that you can give and the easiest way is to head over to influencechurch.co.uk forward slash giving which will give you various ways that will facilitate your giving today. Thank you for partnering with us. guys that is everything going on in the life of church if you need any more information visit our website or any of our social medias and um, to keep updated enjoy the rest of your sunday guys see you next week
Identity is something that defines us all. Whether we choose to see it or not is another thing. I'm a business person. I'm self-employed. I'm single. I'm married. I'm nearly married. I'm a cat person. I'm a dog person. I'm liberal. I'm conservative. I'm anxious. I'm confident. I'm ill. I'm healthy. My family is normal. My family is broken. I have kids. I can't have kids. I really want kids. We're raising a family. I'm doing this alone. For many of us, this becomes our story. These circumstances, both small and large, mixed with cultures, values, morals, thought patterns and life lessons, soon make up a picture of who we believe we are. And with it, we limit who we believe we can ever be. If our story is defined simply by what we do now and our best moments that make it onto social media, then I hate to break it to you. But like a sandcastle built by the ocean, you probably won't be king or queen in the morning. Things change in a moment. That is life. And if our identity is birthed simply from our lowest points, then we are all sinking ships, doomed like the Titanic to the bottom of the ocean, unless our ship has the capabilities of navigating icebergs and internal wars that rage within us, that seem to limit our vision of how we could ever live differently. What if I told you that there was a captain willing to navigate that war within? One with the power to heal, the power to restore, and the power to transform. His name is Jesus. What if I told you that today's circumstances, both good and bad, don't actually define who you are? You don't have to spend today worrying that tomorrow it will all be washed away, because even if it is, you have peace that transcends all understanding, and that peace comes direct from the throne of God. Life is repetitive, and we very quickly become trapped in cycles unless something out of the ordinary and unexpected comes and breaks that pattern of behavior. Jesus did this. He restored our relationship with God. Don't be deceived that this is your lot and that your story ends in the same mess you find yourself in today or that this is your identity. Don't think that you are too far gone or that you are too up and down, too broken or too complicated. When God sent Jesus to this earth, he didn't just bandage up us and our mess. He loved us enough to make us new and he clothed us in his righteousness. His very power, the same power that raised Christ from the dead has been given to us to enable us to live a different life, to change our story. Each and every one of us has a story. We've all had things that we've lived through, journeys that we've had, we've all got our own histories. And one of the things about this year is we are living in history that I think generations from now are gonna be studying. I think when my grandchildren are grown up, maybe it will even be a GCSE subject that they study in history, the great pandemic, the global pandemic of 2020, 2021, and they can say, my grandma, lived through that and my, and my uncles and aunties and all these things and, and it's not easy though it's not been an easy year and um, a few months ago I was talking to my youngest Noah who was kind of having a, a moment that we've all had I'm just saying this is so hard talking about the sacrifice that he and all our children have made kind of I haven't seen grandparents and I can't go to school and, and I hate online school and he was kind of talking about all these things that have been difficult and I said to him trying to be helpful one day, Noah, your children will learn about this and you'll be able to say, I lived through that and I was really brave and I sacrificed things and I helped save people and I helped protect people. And he looked at me and said, but mummy, I don't want to live in history anymore. I just want things to be normal. And maybe you've had times like that where you thought, I, I don't know if I want to be part of history anymore. I don't know if I want to remember some of these things that I'm living through. Maybe you remember the moment, I'm sure you do, when you watch the Boris announcement when he addressed the nation and said, for three weeks, we're gonna close things. And uh, you know, I was fairly um, optimistic and thinking three weeks, that's all it'll take. Slightly proven wrong on that one. But you probably remember the moment that you watched that. We watched it as a family together um, and were surprised and, and saddened by the things that the promise was saying. There's probably other things in your lifetime that you remember moments when. I remember the moment that I heard that the Berlin Wall had come down, I was very young, I was seven or eight years old. I didn't really understand what was happening, but I understood that there was something big happening in history. I still remember kind of watching news articles of this giant wall being falling down, people crying and being happy. 
I remember the day Princess Diana died. I was in a tent in a field at a Christian festival and I remember waking up and hearing people talking. You know when you're half awake, half asleep, I could hear that something was being said. People were upset, there was emotions. And when I heard that Diana had died, I remember thinking this was some weird joke because that couldn't quite be happening. I remember the day when the Twin Towers were hit. I was speaking and leading a youth work conference in Manchester. I remember coming down and there was a weird atmosphere in the office and people said look what's happened and watch the news was just on a constant repeat as we watch these things and and to me it was horrific to see it felt like like this year sometimes like a film that was happening before my eyes not reality and then I was asked if I would tell some of the American uh, students that were in the conference if I take them out and explain to them what had happened and so I took them out and I'd heard of the Twin Towers before, I'd seen it on the opening of Friends, I'd seen news things about it, but I'd, I'd never been to New York. And as I told this group of people about what had happened, their reaction was very different to mine. Many of them were in floods of tears, one of them, her, her dad worked in the Pentagon, and suddenly their version of the living history that they were in was very different to mine. Because for them it was much more close to home. And history, when you break it down, the word is his story. We all live through historic events, we all live through historic times, but it, real history is about how it affects you personally. We all have history, we all have moments in our life that we can look back on as history and think, wow, that impacted me. Big moments, like the moment that you met your husband or wife. I remember meeting a very handsome drummer when I was 16 on a course that I was doing at college, and he turned out to be a Christian. Now, can we take a moment and celebrate that? Girls who are teenagers, because that's fairly rare that you have good looking and Christian and in your world. Uh, and I remember that moment really clearly the first time we were walking, he was holding a, a massive drum and him saying, I'm a Christian, and me thinking, thank you, Jesus. Uh, I remember the moment, a weird moment, when an eagle flew into my house and perched on the back of a dining room chair. I remember when I was asked if I would be on, uh, my face could go on the back of a bus in Darlington. There's, there's weird moments we remember that part of our history. There's happy moments we remember, like the birth of our children. There's sad moments that we remember, like the day that I realized that my gran had died, my nana had died, or the day I realized my, my granddad had died or was dying. I remember the day that I got the phone call so my parents were sp splitting up. And all these stories, all these things, they make our history, they become our story. And an, an amazing thing happened 2000 years ago when history itself changed. In fact, the event changed the calendars that we now live by. Incredible thing happened, Easter happened, and today you know you're sat in an Easter service or you're watching an Easter service. Easter is a time where we celebrate Jesus coming to the earth and radically changing the story. Emmanuel, God with us, came to earth at Christmas, the Messiah. He came and changed everything. I don't know about you, but when you think about your story, you maybe have different thoughts of, of how your story is going to play out. You maybe have predictions in your life about what's going to happen. One of the things that's really got me through all this whole kind of season has been films, and it's kind of like an escapism. But there's a type of film that I'll watch at the moment, and the type of film is this. When you look at the kind of picture on Netflix or, or, or whatever you use, that you can guess what's going to happen. I need predictability. I need to look at a picture or look at the opening scene and already know who's going to end up with who, who the goody is, who the baddie is, who's going to try and destroy this couple. I need predictability. We tried to watch Prison Break. I don't know if you've seen that thing. It's horrific. I watched a few episodes and gave up and said to Ben, my husband, there's no way I'm watching this because it was too intense. I was too confused about who am I supposed to be rooting for right now? Is it ever going to end? It was too awful and dark. And I was like, I'm living, parenting through a global pandemic, pastoring through a global pandemic. I need predictability. I need to know what's going to happen before even the title sequence is opened. I like predictability because let's face it, this world's not predictable. Right now, who would have predicted that we'd still be here a year later? And when it came to Jesus, people had made predictions of what was going to happen. Now, the Bible actually has prophetic stories and prophetic words about what was going to happen, that he was going to be a certain type of person, that he was going to come from a certain place, that he was going to do certain things. And people had interpreted that in a certain way and made assumptions about what that would, that would look like. So they assumed that he'd be of royal heritage, perhaps. They assumed that he would be uh, probably of wealth, that he would come and have issue with certain things, that he'd maybe arrive on a giant, massive stallion horse, that he'd have maybe a crown that he would hang out with and associate with the religious good people of the time. They made all 
all these assumptions about how the story would play out. And yet what happened is Jesus defied every expectation, everything that they, they thought he was going to be, every box they tried to put him in. He didn't arrive into wealth. He arrived into poverty, not to great kind of accomplished parents or king and queen. He arrived to a teenage mum who no one believed. He was born in a stable at Christmas in the kind of secret and hidden time. He didn't arrive on a stallion, on a white magical looking horse. He rode into the, the place where he was about to die on a donkey. The only crown he ever wore was one of thorns, not of gold and silver. He lived a different life. He defied expectations every day that he lived and he changed people's stories. He changed people's stories, the people that came into contact with him. He included the excluded. He loved the unlovable. He encouraged the exhausted and he restored the broken. He spent time with people that others would reject and not accept. He was someone who restored people's lives. He healed people that were sick and made people feel whole. And the religious people, the ones that they expected him to spend time with, were irritated and irked by him. And in the end, they decided that they were done with him and wanted to kill him because he wouldn't defy, he wouldn't fit into their expectations. Perhaps you're watching this and you have an idea of what you think Jesus is. That he's a sandal wearing, long haired, bearded guy who was very kind of softly spoken and didn't really ruffle any feathers. Well, I want to tell you that that's not the Jesus I know. The Jesus I know wasn't a religious box ticking person. He was radical in the way he lived, in the way he talked, in the people he associated with. He came to shake and change people's stories every single day that he walked the earth. And maybe you're in a situation where you're looking at your own story, your own history. You're reflecting and thinking, I'm not so happy with where I am right now. So we have predictions of our own. We have assumptions when we're children about how we will be when we're adults. Well, whether we'll be married or not. Whether we'll have this certain job. Whether we'll be homeowners or not. Whether we'll have a certain weight. Whether we'll kind of be a certain way. Whether we'll be seen in certain places. And none of us, when we predict our futures, predict things like loss or sickness or anxiety, or fear, or sadness. When we think as little children about what our futures will be, we have all these predictions of, of greatness. So what happens when 20, 30, 40 years down the line, the story that we're living isn't the story that we dreamed of? When we haven't quite made the story that we wanted to make? Is it too late? Well, Jesus, this radical teacher, who lived this incredible life, who included the excluded, who loved and walked and acted mercifully and kindly to people who no one else spent time with on the, the, the day that we call Good Friday. Again, he didn't live up to expectations. You see, people thought that when the Messiah came, he'd be a Messiah for the good people. He'd make people that are already good better. But he did something that no one expected. He became the Messiah of the mess. Emmanuel, God with us, was murdered and nobody saw that coming. It wasn't a kind of nice, gentle death. It was a horrific, gruesome death. And nobody could make sense of it. Nobody could see how that could possibly be something that was anything but awful. And his followers who'd been with him and watched him do all these miracles that you've probably heard of before, who watched him kind of heal people and, and defy expectations and, and do this, the story that they were seeing played out in front of them, their Messiah on the cross, broken and beaten, they rejected him and left him because it was too hard to walk through. So not only was Jesus bleeding and dying a horrific death, most of his friends weren't even there. So he had betrayal to add onto it and rejection. How could this be the story? How could this be possible? The day looked so bleak. It looked like the story was over. And maybe you've walked through things in the last few months or years where you've thought my story's over, my story's written. I'm this and I'm always going to be this. Well, because of Easter, we can have a change moment where our story can change. We can say, I once was this, but now I'm this because of Easter. I was once scared. Once I lacked confidence. I once was full of fear. Insecure. I was just wandering. Lost. I was lost, but now I'm found. I once had no purpose. I once lacked direction but God gave me purpose. In my life, I was just wandering, but now I have lots of purpose. Now I found my calling. Once I lacked confidence, but now I'm proud of who God created me to be. I was once scared, but now I'm strong. 
I once lived in fear. But now I am at peace. Now I, I have faith. I once was frightened that God would be a harsh taskmaster, but now I know that he is my gracious and loving father. I once was lost. I once was lost. Now, and I'm, now home. I'm home. Once I was insecure. Now I am secure. I once was broken. Without hope. Restless. I was anxious and now I have peace. Now I'm grounded. I once was in the storm and now I found the stillness. But now I am healing. I once was broken, now I'm whole. I used to be without hope, but now I've got hope. Once I was afraid to speak. Once I never felt good enough, but now I have a voice. I once was blind, but now I see. With Jesus, I know that I am loved and accepted as I am. Once I followed my family's traditions, and now I know it's real. So 
Some people think that being a Christian is about doing really good, maybe going to church, maybe being a certain type of person, maybe fitting standards, maybe being boring, maybe, you know, having a crutch to rely on, maybe just for women or just for certain generations. But being a Christian is about realizing that your story needs a change point. And Easter didn't stop at the cross. You see, Jesus did die. And the reason that he died is because humanity had gone away from the purposes and plans that God had for them. You see, God wanted perfection and goodness, and yet generation after generation kind of messed up, went their own way, made bad choices, and it created a cycle that the Bible calls sin. Sin is anything bad that is against what God wants for us. So it's anything big like murder and all those massive sins, but it's also the small things, the lies that we tell, the time we put ourselves before others. And all this created a gap between us and God, between humanity and God. And God's heart broke because he loves every person in the world. He loves you and he loves me. And so someone had to pay the price. And Jesus told the disciples, he told his followers that this was going to happen, but they couldn't understand how this could possibly be the story. So it's like their mind couldn't compute it. But he explained that I am Emmanuel, God with us, and I'm here to make uh, out of the mess some, some, some beauty. And God is the expert at that, at making beauty out of ashes and making goodness out of bad situations. And so when Jesus came, when he died on the death, what he did was became a substitute for all the pain and the sin that we have done. You see, there has to be justice. God is a God of justice. And so when we make mistakes, there needs to be a price that's paid. So in the Old Testament, the price that's paid is lambs and other offerings given to God to absolve them from their sin and their wrongdoing. But Jesus became the final lamb, the final sacrifice to take the sin and the weight of the world that you and I do on a daily basis. It made a way back to God for us. It gave us options to change our story. So we once were this and now we can be this. We once were anxious, now we can have peace. We once were lost and now we can be found. We once were like this and now we can be healed. He gave us options. The Bible puts it like this. In 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 to 20 in the message version it says this. Because of this decision we don't evaluate people by what they have or how they look. We looked at the Messiah that way once and we got it all wrong. As you know we certainly don't look at him like that now. Now we look on the inside and see that anyone united with the Messiah gets a fresh start, is created new. The old life is gone, a new life emerges. Look at it. All this comes from God, who settled the relationship between us and him. He called us to settle our relationships with each other. God put the world square with himself through the Messiah, giving the world a fresh start by offering forgiveness of sins. God has given us the task of telling any, everyone what he's doing. We're Christ's representatives. God uses us to persuade men and women to drop their differences, enter into God's work of making things right between them. We're speaking for Christ himself now, became friends with God. He's already a friend with you. Become friends with God. He's already a friend with you. I love that version of, of the Bible because it says, look, that we, he's making things new. Maybe you're living a life right now and you're thinking, I, I don't want my story to continue on this track. I don't want one day in 5, 10, 20 years time for me to wake up and keep reliving the same history. I want to change. I want to be how I am now as a was thing, not a reality that I'm in. And because of Easter, because Jesus took the sin and the weight of our world, it brought a change. See, he didn't stay on the cross. He didn't stay dead. On Easter Sunday, he rose again from the grave and defeated death, defeated sickness, defeated anything else that can define us. He made a way. The Bible says he wants to be our friend and help us with our everyday walk through this world. He wants to change your story. Maybe you've been a Christian for a long time and you're watching this and you're thinking this is just another Easter story. Now, I've done Easter lots of times before. I'm usually in church, but right now I'm watching. I want to encourage you. Anyone's story can have a turnaround moment because of what Jesus did. When Jesus defeated death, when he rose from the grave, anything else can be changed. Maybe you're stuck in a cycle of doing things and you know it's a hidden thing, you don't want to keep doing it. 
When you invite the presence of God, he changes your story. When we read the Bible and we look at the Gospels, we read you know, how Jesus spent time with people. We think of Zacchaeus, a tax collector who was corrupt. Jesus had dinner with him, he came out a changed man. Because when you're in the presence of Jesus, things change. That's why for some of you, when you're in a service, you, you kind of get emotional, you feel these things, because Jesus is there. His presence is here, and he offers change to anyone who wants to, to be friend with him. So this Easter, my encouragement is this, that you don't just let this be another service that you go through, but actually you take stock and think for a second, do I need to turn around moment? Does my story need to change? Because there's hope. Because of Easter, there is hope that there's so much more. Jesus paid the price so that we can have a turnaround moment. He wants to be friends with you. He wants to be in your life. So we're going to pray. And also, if you want to respond to this, if you think, yeah, I need, I need Jesus in my life. It's not a crutch. It's not just for the weak. It's for people who say, okay, I want to change right now what happened. I don't want this to continue. I want to be, I have a renewed um, life. That's what being a Christian is. It's about a new life. It's not just kind of like, you know, a life with a bit added on. It's not a life with my Sundays are busier. It's a new life that is found in him. If you want that, what I'd love you to do is just comment yes in the comments below. Uh, and there's going to be a website to go to. It's going to be up on the screen. Influencechurch.co.uk forward slash yes. If you want to go there and just fill in a form, we'd love to spend some time explaining what this life is, what it means to be on a journey as a Christian, how your life can have a turnaround moment with him. If that's you, just comment there or go to the website and fill in the form. I just want to pray for those of you who are watching right now. God, we thank you that with you and our story, anything can change. God, for those of us who have pain in our story, for those of us who've walked, especially these last few months or year, uh, and it's been difficult, God, we pray right now for the peace that passes understanding that's available to us because of your cross. God, I pray that hope would arise, that we'd understand that because of your death and your resurrection, there is hope for the future, that, that no story has gone too far for you to interject and change. For anyone right now who's discounting themselves or deciding that they're not good enough or not, or have been here before and tried and failed, God, we pray right now that you'd just speak to them afresh. Help them see things with fresh eyes, we pray. In your name, Jesus. Amen. You know, if you think, oh, I've done this before, I've tried and I've walked away, I just want to encourage you that, that there is no one too far for God's love not to reach. The Bible says, for he so loved the world that he gave his only son. So whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. Whosoever believes in him. Maybe you think I'm just not good enough, I don't fit. Jesus lived a life of not fitting into expectations. He came for those who kind of, you know, you'd think are typical Christians and those who you maybe think, I'm not sure I fit. He loves you, he has a plan for you, a good plan. And Easter means no one, no story is too far, too far written to change. Easter, it looked like it was over on the Friday, but the Sunday came. And maybe today you need a Sunday moment where things can change. Amen. Thank you for joining with us today for this incredible Easter Sunday service. Why don't you join with us in the week? Stay connected with us through our website and through our different social media channels. If you want to know more about this incredible story of Jesus Christ and the life you can have with him today, why don't you type yes in the comments again and someone from our team will be in contact with you. God bless, stay safe, have a great week.